Can your scientists explain this? But can your scientists explain this? Can they? Can they explain it? A lot of strange things going on in my side of the woods. Very strange. Seems like everything's dead or dying. The artist formerly known as Digibro finally deleted insomnia analysis or at least private state. No longer viewable but unlisted. In fact, half of their videos just disappeared from the internet. I don't know what happened to the good Digibo archive channel that uh Tarbuck was involved in. Don't know what happened to it. Can't find it. Only partial archives seem to exist, which house some of their more popular videos and some of their more popular second channel videos, but often missing from my favorites. Why do I care? We've all grown past Digibro at this point. None of these videos hold up. Of course. Even Digibro grew past Digibro eventually, you know. In a, one of their decompression chamber episodes, Digi talks about how a lot of their fans grow out of them eventually. That uh, they get into Digibro when they're young and impressionable, and they move on. Well, it seems even Digi, that took them a bit longer than they took most of us, grew out of Digibro. Well, that's fine. People move on. People get on with their lives. Digi is allowed to do whatever they want with their life, right? Just like they were allowed to would be received of My Little Pony in a weird way, just like they were allowed to have a weird girlfriend who ultimately kind of ruined their life, just like everyone was warning them they would. Just like they were allowed to transition and change their name and whatever, even though a lot of people didn't like it, they can do whatever they please. Just like they're allowed to smoke an insane amount of weed every day, just like they're allowed to do um, dangerous combinations of stimulant serotonergic drugs um, and risk serotonin syndrome or other medical problems. They're allowed to do as they please with their life. But everyone grows out of Digimon eventually. I'm kind of saddened by this. I'm, I'm pretty sure the, the Digimon are kind of did I leave that Discord server? We'll find out. Um, we'll find out right now. No, I didn't. I didn't leave that Discord server. Still here. Looks like it's still even active. They're still tolerant with every digital video, so that's fine. It's archived for preservation for future generations, so I don't mind. And I'm not going back and rewatching all digital videos anymore. Right? Who is? Well, it turns out maybe I am going back and rewatching all digital videos because I'm going back and watching old me videos. You know, I'm of the semi-opinion that I, like, fell off. I'm trying to get back on. I'm of the semi-opinion that I used to do these, like, big projects, right? I had two of them, The Sacred Cow and Denver. Big project videos, big narrative art and framing, etc. And at some point, I started doing videos that are just sort of clip shows, clip dumps. Un unrelated compilations of vlogs I take on my phone in this low quality to save on storage space. 
Now I don't need to save on storage space anymore. I have a big beefy computer, a few terabytes of storage. It's all fine, right? But I still get the sense that I sort of fell off. But now I'm going back and watching The Sacred Cow. It's not that substantive. I was just in a manic episode when I made it. Now that I look back, it's quite obvious. But I haven't had a serious, severe manic episode for a long time now. Which is kind of strange. It's not like I'm on any drugs or anything. They just kind of stopped happening. Maybe it's because I'm not on any drugs that they stopped happening. So, and again, looking back on these videos, I think some of my recent videos have probably surpassed them. Like, um, some of my recent videos are more stylized, more interesting, from a visual standpoint, from a narrative standpoint, from a philosophical standpoint, more interesting. So I think this I fell off thing is kind of nonsense. But not because I, I've always been good. Rather, I was just never that good. My videos were never that good. I'm, gonna, I'm willing to admit it now. I wasn't. But at the time, I was manic as fuck. Probably for a good few months there. Or at least I would go in and out on these manic episodes. But I believe I was just the best YouTuber to ever exist. That I was involving the medium. I still try and do that from time to time. You know, if I, if I go to my channel... Um, you know, some of these... The creme de la creme videos, like uh, Day Shift, Day Shift 2, Goal is a Truly Believed You Never Existed, those three videos that I made recently, I, I feel like, on reflection, they're better than, probably better than Den, but probably better than The Sacred Cow. Um, I'm pretty proud of those videos, actually. And some of my scripted videos are better, right? Like, I went back and listened to some of my old scripted videos, and they're not that good. Not awful, but they're not that good. I feel like my magical girl, the Otaku and Dramatic Girl video is better. Wish I had had the motivation to make a fully edited video out of it and not just a black screen. But, some change the past. It's fine. I also wish that video had been a little more uh, complete. I feel like I missed out on quite a lot of shows there, mainly because I just sort of ran out of steam for the project. It was taking too long. That's fine. Again, I'm not necessarily that regretful about it. I think the thing these these videos are missing, as old videos had, is a sort of narrative point, right? These old videos seem to be building towards some grand conclusion, whereas my modern videos are more tone pieces. But again, on reflection, that building to a narrative conclusion was more like an, an illusion to doing so, rather than an actual sort of masterful execution of that idea. And in the same sense, these old Digipo videos that I thought the same thing about, it's the same problem. They don't really build to a grand narrative conclusion, they just sort of end. I've always felt like this is a problem with the medium. YouTube videos rarely have exciting conclusions. You know, even old Jesse videos, like the Horseshoe Saga. Horseshoe Finale, on reflection, is not that impressive. Maybe you disagree with me, but I'm pretty sure it's just not that impressive. I think the problem was I just hadn't seen that many movies. I didn't know good narrative conclusions when I saw them. But now I've seen more movies, and I know that I can't really recreate that feeling with a vlog, that sort of cinematic narrative catharsis that I was always going for, the satisfying ending. I just can't quite make it happen. But I don't necessarily know that I want to make it happen. And so here we are, the same house, the same rooms, the same two rooms that all my videos are in, the same two rooms, same, same place, same person, a few years older, and I feel like nothing's changed, but everything's changed. It's, it's very strange, I don't know. 
The YouTube channel has the same banner image of Hunter S. Thompson in played by by Johnny Depp in um, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, even though that movie never really meant that much to me. I just happened to have made some glitch out of it relatively recently when I created my channel banner. The same way, if you go to my main channel, the banner, I don't know if it still is, but it was last I checked. Um, maybe, I, maybe I've changed it since then, but um, it was, uh, it still is this, this image from Society for Spectacle or the cover, the front cover of Society for Spectacle, one of the editions, uh, which was a book that meant a lot to me when I made that cover, and it, I still like Society for Spectacle, but, you know, I, I haven't changed it to update. Just fine. Again, none of this is negative. I'm just pointing it out. Nostalgia is a powerful goggle. The powerful they live glasses to look back on things with, and or rather, it's a it's a powerful not to they live glasses, right? When you try and look back on things from a more objective perspective, you find that your idea of the past is tainted by the emotions you carry with you from those events, and you can never untaint them. You can only we just reevaluate them with a new ideology clouding your vision. I'm a little worried. My Mac, which I've been using to edit these videos and make music on, finally shed the bucket after about five years, which, on the scale of how I expect computers to work, is atrocious. But on a scale of Mac, it's pretty good. How am I supposed to edit this very video that I'm filming? I don't know. I might use Caden Live. I might find some other way to go about it. You'll probably hear about it later in this video. How I've decided to edit it. For now, I don't know. I don't really have some grand conclusion I'm building towards. This isn't a video about nostalgia or anything. This is a video made because sometimes the best thing you can do is get drunk and make a YouTube video. I discovered that through Digibo, and I will be ever grateful, no matter their failings, for teaching me that lesson and I rediscovered it through my own YouTube channel. That I can make these weird little movies as a sort of pure artistic expression with no expectation of reward in the form of attention or God forbid money, right? I don't make it. I'm further away from making money off of any of this than you know, I am to Australia to Sydney in real life. And in that sense it's a sort of pure artistic expression which I appreciate. Pretty interesting time, pretty interesting life, where my certain things about who I consider myself to be are noticeably absent, but haven't been necessarily replaced with anything. And so I'm forced to reanalyze my entire identity from scratch. Again, you know, I've always been obsessed with this whole idea of identity, but I've been obsessed with it in the negative. I've already, I've always been obsessed with negating the idea of identity, even when I didn't understand that's what I was obsessed with. You know, from back in 2015, 2016, when I was 
watching Sargon of Akkad like someone does in 2015, right? As a young teenager, or I guess at that point a little too old of a teenager to justify, but um, you know, negating these SJWs and their obsession over identity politics. Past that, to watching Evangelion and considering the prospect of the Human Instrumentality Project and the consequences it would have as a philosophical idea. What if all was one? To reading Max Stirner and finding out about the idea of the created nothing, to reading Buddhist texts and finding out about the illusory nature of the self, or at least reading about the illusory nature of the self, and reading, you know, anarchist critiques of identity, and so on. In my music, my early songs, you can hear this theme. If you listen to the lyrics, especially in like No Thank You 1 and 2, I talk constantly about this thing like, about my name. I'm like, say my name, call me by my name, think about my name, right? Which was my, me alluding to this idea that like, you can summarize it, like it's comical or, or insane that you can summarize a whole person in just one word by their name, right? I've always been interested in this idea of like identity as this fickle mistress that we're all like subtly beholden to. But I'm, being interested in the idea is a very, very different thing from being comfortable maneuvering my way through that debris field. A very different thing entirely. So it is a little scary to have not really had any major manias or depressions for a long while now because for a long time I was, I was depressed always. This is how bipolar 2, which is what I have, often shows up. At first it shows up as basically just depression, that you're just sort of mildly depressed all the time, which I was throughout most of my late teenage years and past and more beyond um, and then it's sort of the mania starts, the hypomania technically, they don't call it full-on mania, the hypomania starts. I have had full-on mania I think but only drug-induced full-on mania and when I say drug-induced I don't mean you know doing meth or something, what I mean is uh, SSRIs. It's well known that if you put a bipolar person on SSRIs without a mood stabilizer then mania ensues. But I was misdiagnosed with depression, they gave me a, a, a sertraline, an SSRI, and you can see the results that it had by just going back through my YouTube videos from the period. And this is something that's so valuable about my channel to me, is that I can look back on these periods of my life and see what, what the fuck I was like. I knew that eventually this would happen when I started the YouTube channel, like I knew that there would be this resource in the back of my mind, but I didn't realize how interesting it would be to be to just have this personal diary that I could look back on. It was very interesting. If you go scroll all the way back, all the way down, and you look at like the videos around the time of the video Sertraline Sermons, which I'll see if I can find it. How far back is it? Yeah, about three years ago, Sertraline Sermons. You can see just a few videos around that time um, where I'm just fairly obviously fucking off my shit uh, going going forward like right up until end of SSRI Van Gelly death up, up until that from certainly in sermons up until end of SSRI Van Gelly death um, you can see me going fucking insane Uh, I'm being just insanely manic, and I've talked about this before, during that time in uni, I was also being insane, I was, you know, getting in arguments with the lecturers in the middle of class about how the music they were showing us was hauntological, and like, don't they feel ashamed to be looking back on the past with such nostalgic joy, rather than trying to create something new, is insane. At one point I got up and, you know, the, the, the Christchurch shooting had just happened and I got up in class and said, 
any LGBT people, you need to be 3D printing guns because they're coming for you. That's what I said. In class, in front of everyone. I was going fucking nuts. I was going nuts. I think that was like the, the most full on mania I've ever had. But even then, it wasn't as manic as some people get. I would never believe that was Jesus Christ or anything. So, maybe even that was still like just a higher level of hypomania. Hypo meaning less than, below. Um, anyway, the hypomania starts happening. I have these hypomanic episodes where. Well, I guess I, that's where I recorded Denver and Sacred Cow and so, so on. And then, more recently, it just sort of slowed down and I guess stopped. And this happens apparently. I've heard people talk about this. I never expected it to happen to me. But I've heard that some people just grow out of bipolar. They just have bipolar in their early 20s and then it goes away. It's not even that uncommon. It's not super, it's not like it happens to everyone, but it's not even that uncommon. But I assumed it would never happen to me. But, here I am. I can't make statements for sure, you know, I can't say for sure that in the future I won't, you know, sort of come back into a, de a serious depression or whatever, but... It hasn't happened for a good few months now. I've just been... normal. I don't know, maybe this is attributed to being in a good relationship for the first time in my life. Maybe, you know, I don't know. Definitely strange, and it causes you to reevaluate who you are. You have, you know, people say, like, oh, building your, your identity around your mental illness is, is bad. Right? And I agree, it is bad building your identity around, around your mental illness. Uh, I, I, like, that is bad, but also, there's definitely an extent to which you can't help it. You you can't help it. If that's something you're dealing with every single day, you you know, you're gonna end up at least without even intending to subsuming it into a part of yourself. Now, there's a level to which you can try and avoid this, but there's a level to which it's inevitable. And trying to understand who you are in the absence of your brain acting without your control, quite difficult. Now, I say that as if I'm completely normal and healthy now. I think if you could look just over there and see the, the state of the mess in my room, you would quickly see that's not the case. But I'm abnormal and unhealthy in different ways, or at least different ways that matter. I'd say my main problem right now is executive dysfunction, which I suppose I've had forever. But if you don't want to pathologize it, you could just say like, sort of laziness or a motivation or I don't know and maybe maybe this is a sign of depression maybe it's just I'm person I haven't even noticed <laughs> but which has happened before by the way you might think that's absurd but it's happened before where I've, I've only realized how depressed I was like some event happens and it causes you to realize oh I've been like insanely depressed the past month it happens it happens. Sometimes you're not aware of it. But anyway. Strange strange place to be in my life. Definitely a strange place to be in my life. But I'm neither particularly happy nor particularly sad about it. Because I'm... You know, I my whole goal in life for a long time has been... I used to be filled with just a, a level of self-hatred, right? And I still am to some extent. I don't know if that'll ever go away, but it's definitely much less, and at a certain point I realized, like, if I hate myself, or like, to put it another way, I have to live inside my own head every day of my life. I have to live here. I have to, I, ha I have no choice. I have to live inside of my own head every day. So the least I can do is try and make it as interesting a place to live as possible. It's been my philosophy for a while. Even before I knew that it was my philosophy, it had been my philosophy without me even noticing it. Basically, forever, since I was a child. Since I was a child reading Scott's Almanac by torchlight, or flashlight light, if you're American, under my covers, after I was supposed to be asleep. 
I've been trying to put stuff in here. Couches, bean bags, beds, places where I can be comfortable or at least be interested, where I can have interesting thoughts, where I can, I don't know, live. Live in a place that isn't super uncomfortable to live in. And it's over the years, you know, become more complicated, so and so. Some stuff just happens. Now, I'm, I'm fairly skeptical of the idea of how important agency is in, in who we are. You know, it doesn't necessarily feel I have much agency in this whole endeavor, especially in the case of times when my my mind just sort of betrays me. I'm also questioning whether I gave myself brain damage at some point with some very irresponsible or ill thought through activities. But even if I did, I think by now I would have healed from it. And I, I think I probably have. I'm gonna go too deep into that. It's nothing serious. It's all it's not it's not like I'll just put it around the way, it's nothing that you might think was serious, right? That's how I did it. It's because I thought there was nothing that anyone might think was serious until a few years later during research I found out, oh, this has a chance of causing brain damage. I don't know if that's just it, but, you know. Like, my relationship with the world has just fundamentally changed. But like a like a frog in a boiling pot of water that happened so slowly that I didn't even notice it happening. My interest in doing drugs just sort of slipped away one day. And I didn't notice. And I realized, huh, I have very little interest in trying all of these fancy schmancy new drugs like I did one day. One day, you know, there was a time when I was like, I want to try every drug. I want to try every drug before I die. Nowadays, I could take it or leave it. It's just drugs. It's not a big deal. It's particularly important to me. My alcohol consumption. There was a time when I drank every night or I couldn't sleep because I was overthinking things in my head. Or even just out of order. Right? I reached a point where eventually I just stopped drinking. Not out of any concern for my health or anything. Not because you know, I was like, oh, I need, I'm becoming an alcoholic. I never came close to becoming an alcoholic. Just gradually, over time, I lost interest. I lost interest in drinking alcohol all the time. I still drink. I'm drinking right now. If you could see how I made this drink, you would be concerned for my safety. It was almost entirely vodka. If the drink was about this much vodka, and then this much Kahlua. So that's why Black Russians are amazing, because you barely taste the vodka. Anyway. You know, I, 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 I'm getting back into drinking recently. The past few days I've had a little bit of drink, but I'm not at the state that I was where I would drink for bed. You know, I would, I, I would basically be have a hangover every other day. To me, it's not worth it anymore. You know, I went through a phase where I smoked weed every day. That got that got old fast. Uh, and I went through. I've gone through a couple of phases where I'm trying all sorts of drugs. Those get old fast. I don't know. I've just lost the desire to to like do that. I, I, mostly because it's more annoying than anything else because I have stuff I want to do. I don't want to be on drugs. I want to do stuff. And being on drugs makes it me worse at doing stuff. I don't want to be on drugs. I want to read this weird fucking blog post I read. I'm not going to be able to make heads or tails of it if I'm on fucking whatever. Right? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not fucking straight edge or some bullshit like that. Right? I still... I still <laughs> If you've got it, I'll take it, right? But I'm not going out of my way, is the big point I'm trying to make here. I'm not going out of my way to do any of this stuff anymore, like I went to us. Right. So what I've done here is a classic no thank you mistake. I've 
absent-mindedly queued for a Counter-Strike game while I'm in the middle of making a video, which is going to make it impossible to make this video, especially since I don't know how to fucking smoke a cigarette and play Counter-Strike at the same time. I don't know, okay, side note, this, this clip has gone on for way longer than I expected to, this was not supposed to be half an hour long, this is supposed to be the introduction to the video. Um, I don't know how people just do a cigarette in their mouth all the time, the smoke goes into my eye. When I get a paper cigarette here, the smoke goes right up into my eye. How do people do that? I'm stunned. Alright, I got I got a fucking I don't know what I got there. I got a one this round of counter strike. I don't know. Alright, you know what? The thing about Robocop is it works on every level. You're gonna hear me say this a lot. Robocop, it works on every level. It's both an incredible action movie, one of the best, on a surface level, just an incredible 80s action movie with everything you would want from a movie like that and more. And in addition, it's a very poignant political satire, which delivers on all of its promises. It doesn't just deliver, it amazes, it surprises, it goes above and beyond what's expected of it. One of the best movies ever made. Every scene, it's every shot, every cut it takes, as long as it needs, exactly, and no more, no less. Every camera angle, every edit, every dialogue line is perfectly crafted to be what it is. No more, no less, what it has to be, what it should be. It's a perfect movie, honestly speaking. And, on a deeper level, it's an, it's an examination of what it means to be human, and what is indefatigable about the human experience. What is undeniable, what, what can one take away but the whole remains. People, they only want to focus on the negatives in life. But life is good sometimes. I made a little misplay, I made a little misjudgment. Well, I made two misjudgments. The first misjudgment I made was that in the first segment of this video, I got way too fucking drunk to continue recording by complete mistake. But the second misjudgment I made is deciding to make a video that I know I'm going to have to edit uh, at a time period where my machine that I edit on, this one, is bricked. It's dead. It don't turn on. Don't even try and turn on. Nothing happens when you press the power button. Completely bricked. People judge me for using Macs, and rightly so, okay? Macs have been very bad for a very long time. Um, and if I could go back in time, you know, I wouldn't use a Mac, but I do. I use Mac software. Why? Well, simply put, my first, well, when I was whatever age I was, um, my parents decided it was time for me to get, to get my first laptop. Now, it wasn't actually my first laptop. I'd had a laptop before. Um, but that laptop was my dad's old work laptop, which was extremely slow extremely old and didn't have a working Wi-Fi card. It had a You had to put a little dongle in it and it was the cheapest possible dongle and um, Meaning that I grew up my first experiences on the internet were with essentially dial-up Slow dial-up internet speeds, although I was on a broadband connection because of this terrible dongle 
on a terrible laptop. But eventually my parents decided to get me a proper laptop and I assume that Apple's successful marketing campaigns that all creative professionals use Macs convinced my parents to buy me a Mac. Um, you know, I think it was fairly obvious from a young age that I was a creative type, uh, whatever. Um, and so they bought me a Mac and I'm obviously very thankful that they bought me a nice computer and I used that. You know what, actually, they bought me this Mac. This very Mac. Um, here. It still almost works. Uh, here, I'll give you a, a little tour. A little tour. Hold on a minute. This Mac. Um, it's completely fucked. I don't think it turns on anymore. The, uh, this is cracked. The touchpad is cracked. The glass on the touchpad is cracked. Um, you can still see I have a sticker over the camera. Anything interesting about it? Um, the bottom says... It used to say... I don't know if you can read that. It used to say something like, Make music, have fun. Uh, something like that. Um, and it has a bunch of fucking stickers on the back. Now... Um, and... You can sort of see... On top of those stickers, it says, World is a fuck. Um, now, a lot of these stickers, uh, you know, we have this sticker, which is Leviathan. I got this when I bought my Leviathan t-shirt. Um, I have uh, Fontaine, Fontaine down here, right? Two Fontaine logos, red and blue. And uh, this Japanese looking thing was came in the box of a Kendama I bought. This, you can barely see it, fat boy eat all day. Um, this is a brand of clothing, sort of, which uh, they once had a, a uh, oh, I'd have to do this. Uh, they once had a t-shirt that said, uh, this is called Cardistry, and they also released a deck of cards. And so this sticker came with the t-shirt and the deck of cards. Um, I was very into this cards thing. Again, related to this, Theory 11 sticker, that comes whenever you buy something from Theory 11, or at least it used to. And um, you can sort of see this like no no religion thing. There's a sticker I bought off of an, an anarchist website a long, long, long time ago. Um, I bought a, a few of these like anarchisty stickers, um, and this one says it has a, um, a few religious symbols crossed out, and it says fairy tales are for children. I was very edgy at the time. Um, but most of these other stickers came from a sticker book that I bought at an art gallery. Um, so they're not, they don't really have much of a personal meaning. More so they're just neat stickers. And you can also see it says, no thank you here. It says no thank you here. Uh, it has the Tachibana Industries logo down there. Very small, very faded. Um, this was my original Mac, and I used this, this is how I learned to make music, this is how I learned to edit, everything that I did was on this Mac pretty much for a long, long time. Eventually I got a desktop, well, I built a desktop, and by I built a desktop, I mean, I mainly got my friend to build it for me, who had done it before, uh, allegedly, although he didn't do a very good job of it, no offense, um, we were very young at the time, I don't blame him. Um, and uh, I think I overpaid for that a lot of parts. Well, I say I did. Convinced my parents to overpay for all those parts. Um, and that laptop, uh, that desktop, was where I first played. Like, I can't begin to describe the amount of nostalgia I have associated with this computer. I made all of my like first ever albums on this. I made No Thank You Volume One and, uh, on this, and some of No Thank You Volume Two. I made, like, the X49 stuff was all on this. Um, stuff that you have never even heard, probably. And maybe I posted some of it on Patreon a long, long time ago, but... Um, like, a bunch of music, a bunch of, like, video projects before I was this YouTuber. I made, like, all of my old cardistry videos on this, um, and other videos before that that never got posted on the internet, just with friends. Um, first played Minecraft for the first time on this computer. Um, 
like I, I can't even describe the amount of memories and nostalgia associated with this this computer. Not that I actually like it. <laughs> um, it's still, a, it, I mean, most of my memories of this computer is with it being painfully slow and annoying to use. Um, uh, yeah. I remember watching Game Theory for the first time. I remember young Sai showing up at my house and showing me a Game Theory video. Like, that's how old this fucking computer is and how many memories I have associated with it. Um, but this is why I use Mac software, because I learned all of the stuff that I do on this computer. Um, first with GarageBand and iMovie, and then with a natural progression to pirated copies or you know, perfectly legitimate copies. Obviously, these days, just to, just as, as a disclaimer here, I do not condone pir no, I do condone pirating software, but um, you have no evidence, one way or the other, whether my music is created on legitimate copies of the software that I use, and I assure you it is. I forgot, you can't take risks with this shit. After what happened to Frank JFC, you cannot take risks with this shit. Um, so that's why I use Final Cut Pro to edit, and I use Logic Pro to, to make music. It's for that reason, for that simple reason. And um, also because uh, I would have switched to, there's no, there's no viable Linux alternatives to either of those softwares. There's Linuxes, there's Linux programs that can do similar things, but there's no viable alternatives. There's no industry standard level Linux alternatives to any of those software. Um, I can use Premiere Pro. Uh, I did a whole film course where I used Premiere, Premiere Pro for like a year, so I'm reasonably competent with it. Not as good as I am a Final Cut, but I'm not as fast with the like shortcuts, but given a few months practice, I could probably become that fast. But in terms of music, I've used Ableton a couple of times. Um, actually more than a couple of times I've used Ableton enough that I could probably create a bare bones song in Ableton if you gave me a computer with it right now, but I personally just like the workflow of, of uh, like I just have this workflow in Logic that is just too good to abandon. Every time I try and abandon it, like it just feels frustrating and slow. Like I can't do any of the things that I want to do as fast as I want to do them. I'm just so quick in Logic, but because I've been doing it for like 10 years or more, that Everything else feels slow and frustrating to me. So, I'm stuck in the Apple ecosystem until I grow some balls <laughs> and migrate. Uh, and so, this is uh, an old MacBook Air, uh, which I'm currently updating to the newest version of iOS, no, what is it called, OS X, whatever. Updating to the newest version of OS X so I can run the newest versions of Logic and Final Cut. Because I'm trapped in the fucking Mac ecosystem. And so this is the problem that I did not account for, was making a video before I even had a computer which I could edit that video on. I mean, I suppose I could use Caden Live on the big desktop. Like, theoretically, I can do that. I've, e I, I've edited a few videos in Caden Live before, but you and I both know that Caden Live is not actually a viable video editing software. Like, we both know it. There's no use pretending. You can do simple, basic, put video together, put clip after other clip, put a title on it. You can do that. You can cut, you can paste, but you can't do any of the interesting compositing or color correction or anything like this. I mean, you probably can if you're willing to fuck around with like terrible user interfaces and clunky mechanisms, but I for one am not willing to do that. Hi, this is the third take, because every time I try and say this, I come off like an asshole. So I'm gonna try and make it way shorter and way less asshole -ish. So, in summary, Ludwig and Jay Schlatt, of all people, have attempted to uh, solve YouTube's copyright issues by producing a small library of mainly classical uh, songs licensed under the Creative Commons license. Uh, 
Everyone is very happy about this. I am unhappy about this. The reason I am unhappy about this is because, not due to the fault of any single person involved, simply because what looks to me very obviously like an example of musicians just not having enough time to rehearse, otherwise talented musicians just not having enough time to rehearse, and a lack of budget and time in order to gather a full orchestra, um, these songs are not very good versions of the classical and Baroque songs that they cover. Particularly, my personal favourite out of the bunch, Winter by Vivaldi, which is just the first Allegro, not the whole piece, which is unfortunate because, in my opinion, the second Allegro is the best part, but whatever. Right? Winter by Vivaldi, um, the, the soloist, the violin soloist, makes some very strange and interesting decisions with regards to the uh, rhythmic components of his solos, which I personally do not like. I'm not a fan of these rhythmic decisions. They're very unusual decisions, not normally how the song is played. Um, but hey, who am I to comment? Well, sadly, now I know I'm gonna have to hear every fucking YouTuber use this version of the song, even though there's already a perfectly good Creative Commons licensed version of Winter, which I know because I sampled that version for a breakcore song many years ago. The other thing is the timpani in uh, Also Sprach Zarathustra is clearly fake, it's clearly a VST, it doesn't sound like it's recorded in the same room as the rest of the ensemble, it doesn't sound like real timpani, and that is just gonna stick out to me every time I fucking hear the song. It's very obvious to me. It probably is not obvious to 90% of people, and they don't care, and why should they? But I'm fucking autistic about this shit, and I notice. And there's these little problems with all of these songs, like the, the Bach cello suite. Uh, there are some just fairly minor, but very noticeable, sloppy playing. Again, I just suspect the musician didn't have enough time to rehearse. Uh, she was probably in a rush, and also that's not really the fault of the production company either. They have limited time and money to work with, right? And so there are some sloppy crossovers in her performance, some somewhat dodgy intonation, which, again, I'm sure 99% of people aren't even going to notice, but every time I hear this, it's going to be the only thing I can fucking think about. And look, I'm not here to be some sort of like uppity, like, oh, this is how the song's supposed to fucking sound. How dare you perform it in a way I don't like. But I just noticed these things, okay? And I have to point it out to someone or I'm gonna go fucking insane. Just to prove that I'm not like nitpicking some dumb shit, I hope everyone can hear this. Okay, this is the, the Ludwig J. Schlatt version of like the violin solo parts of Winter, right? Here we go. And I'm gonna compare them to this Voices of Music um, rendition of the same part. So you can see that, hear the difference, you can hear that I'm not insane, right? Now, the Voices of Music version is much faster, but that's not what I'm talking about. The, the, the faster tempo is irrelevant here. It's, it's the, the timing and the intonation that I think is worse in the Ludwig version. Okay, you hear that? Now this is what it's supposed to sound like, or at least how I've always heard it played. Right, they're playing in a different key and a different tempo, but what, what matters here is the that first note of the, the, the repeated uh, line, the right? The first note is like half a beat longer, or like a quarter step longer when this guy plays it, and I don't know why, I've never heard anyone do that before. Right, it goes... Right? No one plays it like that. It's supposed to be pretty much all the same length, as far as I'm aware, right? Right? There's no... There's none of that... The, the weird pause. I don't know why he, I don't know why he did that, and that's just gonna annoy me forever. It's gonna annoy me forever. And he does it again in the, the he, he does a weird fucking thing again. 
Why? It's not, that's, that's, not, that's not how the song goes. That's, you're playing it wrong. You're playing it wrong. It's not, it's, it's, there's no, those notes are all the same length. What is that? Before someone says, oh, it's just rubato. Yeah, okay, technically, you can make the argument that this is some intentional rubato, but it's pretty obviously not. I, I just think he can't play that fast, or he didn't have enough time to practice, or he just played it weird for some reason. I don't know. Obviously, it's music. It's subjective. Maybe this is how he likes it to sound. But it is not how I like it to sound. It is not how it normally sounds, and it's weird that he did that. If someone hired me to play the most generic version of a song so that people can use it on YouTube, I would not play it with weird rubato. I don't think that is appropriate. So, remember when I said something about videos that build to a point? I guess this is the point of the video. The video is kind of about nostalgia, right? I talked about Digibro. I talked about my old computer. That's good enough for me. <laughs> it's good enough for me. Let's get a theme in here, right? Shove a fucking theme in here. Why not? Ah, nostalgia, eh? Wait, like, I don't really like nostalgia. I try and avoid it. I try and avoid, like, falling into traps of nostalgia. And a lot of my friends and people I know, like, they don't, they don't have this sort of gut instinct against nostalgia. This, like, this immune response that I have. Where I, like, desperately try and avoid it. Or at least falling into, like, a sort of toxic nostalgia. A sacred nostalgia. Whatever you want to call it. But I just, I... I'm very aware that, that when you're in a state of nostalgia... Now... Just to put it out there, I don't think there's anything actually wrong with it, with nostalgia. In fact, I think nostalgia is a wonderful emotion. A one which should, should be highly valued. But um, there is a fact, which is that nostalgia is a very impressionable state to be in. It, it is, you know, to use an extreme example, it is the, 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 the emotional basis of fascism, right? Like, it, like this sort of nostalgia for a mythical great past um like the, the, it is a very impressionable mental state to be in and so you have to be very careful when you allow yourself to feel this um so yeah i do have nostalgia and i do do sometimes reminisce on old memories and i think that's all healthy and good and whatever but i i don't try and you know pretend that it's still 2007 or something so I, I never really liked the sort of uncritical nostalgia i never liked like stranger things or or this sort of uncritical 80s nostalgia. I never liked the Y2K nostalgia that the, the entire boom, which never had any criticism built into it at all, except maybe like some of the early PC music stuff, but then that all faded away. And that, that's the fucking problem, right? It got, it got washed away and it's just history repeating itself. And even for reasons, you know, I haven't even mentioned, you know, hauntology or anything like this because, you know, you don't have to. And... I just, I think it can be, it, it's a strange mix, right? You have to, you have to balance the scales. Because at the one hand, you don't want to just deny yourself this fundamental human experience for no reason, just because you're scared that, that you might get a mind virus from it. But on the other hand, the risk of mind viruses is and always has been very real. I think one of the things that kind of prevents me from experiencing the same kind of nostalgia that some of my friends have is that, I just don't have such a hard time letting go as some other people. Um, um, sure, it upsets me and it, it makes me kind of sad and makes me kind of mad. But at the end of the day, I, I, I have some level of acceptance of just like universal transience. You know, like uh, uh, since I brought up Digibro at the beginning of the video, um, you know, I can I'll talk about YouTubers that like my two most formative YouTubers uh, were, were probably my most, the, the YouTubers channels that had the most impact on, uh, my, my sense of self, I guess, or whatever, as I was growing up, is probably U Digibro and Funhouse, both of which no longer exist, at least in the same form that they used to. Um, you know, we all know what happened to Digi, but, uh, uh, Funhouse, if you don't know, kind of a complicated story, but I'd been watching Funhouse... Uh, since before they were even called Funhouse, they used to work at, at IGN, they used to be like a subgroup of, no, no, what are I talking about? They used to work at Machinima, they used to be a subgroup at Machinima called Inside Gaming. Um, I'm not going to tell you the entire fucking, as much as I am really tempted to, as much as I love telling you the entire lore of Funhouse, it is not relevant. Um, so I have to make sure I don't do that. Come on, don't, 
don't don't go into the whole the whole spiel. Um, there used to be um, a channel called Inside Gaming, um, not IGN, different thing. There used to be Inside Gaming. Um, then Machinima made them all redundant, fired them all, and Rooster Teeth picked them up, and they basically came back doing the same content as before, but more and better. Um, under the new name Funhouse, with some new members joining over the years and some members leaving, but it came to a point where uh, there was always this core, right, this core group, which was really um, uh, uh, Adam, Bruce, and James, the core three, with Nor with Lawrence, in my opinion, was also very important as a member of the core squad. Uh, right, this sort of Adam, Bruce, James, and Lawrence as the main members. Now, to be fair, if you go back and watch some of these old Funhouse videos, they still hold up. I will tell you, I've done it. Right, I've I've rewatched all of these videos a billion times because I I like rewatching things. This is this is something that's different between me and and Dotes, mate, Is that I I I'm perfectly happy to rewatch my favorite YouTube channel YouTube videos. 10 or 15 times like I I like doing that I guess it's just autism and I guess you could say that's a form of nostalgia I don't know but more so just not because I'm necessarily nostalgic for them more so just because I like the videos and if they're you know oftentimes they're good on a rewatch you know same way you might rewatch a movie or replay through a game um I think people don't really do that with YouTube videos that often but I just always have and so I've rewatched a lot of these old Funhouse videos, and they still hold up. They're still really funny. But uh, a lot of those jokes you couldn't. <laughs> a lot of those jokes you could not get away with these days. <laughs> um, there is a lot of uh, there's there's various accents and <laughs> impersonations, and uh, yeah, I don't think you can get away with a lot of that anymore. But that's fine. Um, but Funhouse kind of collapsed. Um, uh, Sort of in rapid succession, three of the key members left. Um, two of their own volition, <laughs> and once one of them in disgrace. Uh, which which was kind of interesting, right? Like, uh, but it kind of interesting in its own right. Uh, but two two of them just sort of moved on. Bruce and Lawrence moved on to just sort of do their own thing. Um, they'd been you know doing inside gaming and then Funhouse for over a decade at that point, I think, so, or almost a decade, approaching a day, I don't know, a long ass time to be in the same job, doing YouTube shit, and they're all like, in their 40s now, and whatever, like, they moved on to do their own shit, it's fine, right, no problem, and then Adam got, uh, some, some stuff went down with him, uh, he's sort of back, he, 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 he sort of was cancelled for a year, and then uploaded another video to his YouTube channel. He, like, wrote a book and has a podcast now. It's really fucking boring. I thought I could get... He used to do vlogs back in the day. Like, all of the Funhouse members had their own personal YouTube channels where they would sometimes do these sort of, like, low-effort personal content. Um, and he used to have some interesting vlogs back in the day, but his new content, like, his podcast, it's just dog shit. I am not interested in his book at all. Um, but none of that matters, because the point I'm trying to make here is that you know, Funhouse is over. They still exist. They still have, like, 2 million subscribers, and they still upload, like, every other day, and they get 10k views a video or something. It's, like, really bad. It's embarrassing. And they have, like, a whole new cast. Like, half the people are, are completely different, um, and, and the, the vibe is just completely different. Everything's different, Everything, and it's not only different, but worse. Like, I feel like not just on a, like, on a level of... It's no longer the familiar thing. Because they've done that before, right? Lots of new members joined and changed the group dynamics. They even had episodes where, you know, they ended up having sort of a B team towards the end there, where there would be some episodes that didn't even have any of the main core three in them, and they were they were just sort of the B team of, of editors or people who used to be editors or whatever, right? And those are funny too. So it's not just that it's not the same people anymore. It's not just that it's not exactly the same. It's just that it's act actively worse. Um, and much, significantly much worse, uh, and no one wants to watch it, and they get no views, and, um, I honestly feel like it is kind of painful watching them <laughs> keep making videos when they're clearly, 
uh, you know, I don't know, it's kind of embarrassing, but, uh, so fun house is over, you know, this sort of thing happens. And, uh, those videos don't go anywhere. Like, I can still go back and watch those old videos, and that's still comforting to me. Um, and I obviously have some nostalgia for waking up in the morning and, like, oh, there's a new GTA 5, like, race video, which, uh, they never had anything. They were just podcasts with GTA footage in the background. Um, like, I definitely have nostalgia for that period of, of my life and those, those videos. But at the same time, I don't really let it color my experience that much, I feel like. Am I coming off as, like, super pretentious in this video? I feel like talk, just talking about classical music at all makes me come off as pretentious. I like music, right? What, what do you want me to fucking say? I'm a musician. It's like the one thing I'm into. It's music. Of course I'm gonna critique shit. Uh, I need to... Probably should be talking about anime here, right? That will bring my pretension levels down. Talk about fucking... Gotcha user. Talk about gotcha user. That will bring my fucking pretension levels down. You know, I need to get some... Like, you think, like, anime posters? You think? I've been thinking about it recently. Like, look, this video is off the fucking rails, okay? We, we've stopped caring at this point. Anime posters, maybe? <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? Hold on. Let's, let's do a test run. Let's do a fucking test run. Um, do I have any, like, tape or anything? I got, okay, for, for, forget nostalgia, who fucking cares about any of that shit? I'm trying to find some tape. Hmm. Like, my fucking, like... You see how my bed is, like... All the way... Pushed, like, hold on, let me... Like, you see how it's, like, all the way pushed over there? It was all the way pushed over there. I didn't push it over there. It's just like slowly migrated. I don't know how that happened. I, I, I genuinely, um, look, I don't know how it happened. I didn't do it. It just happened. Like, like some sort of natural process. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna do about this. My only, oh, it was right in front of me the whole time. Well, wow, that was interesting. Okay, now, you know, l last night, when was this? Yeah, yesterday, I, I ended up ordering pizza, uh, and the pizza was cheaper, it was like over 20 quid, like I think it was like 24 quid to just buy the pizza, there was a deal for a pizza and a drink that was like cheaper than that, so, but the drink is like fairly big. And they only had drinks, like soft drinks, they didn't have like, water or anything. I don't really drink these sorts of things, but they gave me this big coke, I don't know what to do with it, so I'm just sort of sipping it every time I walk by. Which is not good. I, I don't need the extra calories. But, um, anyway. The plan here is, well, it should be self-evident, is to use this Velcro tape because it's all I have. Um, get a couple of Velcro bits. Couple of Velcro bits. Okay. And now, stick a, the one anime poster I own in a place where it's actually beautiful. Right, we don't need any of this plastic shit. It's a little crumpled. It's not in the best shape. But it'll do. Mainly as a test run. It's 
been neglected. I won't deny that. It has been neglected. But... I don't know. I don't really have an excuse. I just didn't put it over here for some reason. Okay. Do that. Do this. Do that. Come on. A little faster, please. There we go. And... Boom. Maybe here. There we go. Monogatari Season 2. Right? Anime poster. What do you think? More? I'm thinking like... Gotcha Yusa. Maybe some... Gotcha Yusa. A little bit of... Gotcha Yusa. More, just more. Just more in general. What do you think? Sounds good. It's a good idea. No? Yes? I don't know. We've got the the wall over there. We've got the painting over here. The mirror over there. But then over here, there's always just been this like a little bit of lane stuff. But now we got the poster over here. It does start to balance it out a little. It does. You know what? It does. Now the problem... Okay. Here's the fucking problem with all of this. Is I don't know how the fuck anyone gets anime merch. All the anime merch on the internet is either prohibitively expensive or prohibitively low quality. Like, the, the fucking Monogatari poster I have. Like, I don't know if you can really see it on camera, but it is like fairly obviously a kind of a low quality JPEG. Like, it kind of looks like shit. Um, in, you know, if you stand like this far away from it, it's fine. But if you look, get close up, you can kind of see, you can see the pixels. It's not good. You don't want to see the pixels and stuff like this. You really don't want to be seeing the pixels. So, I don't know where the fuck to, you know, I go on the, like the Bifad guide wiki thing. And none of them have like posters. They just have like, like figures. I'm not interested in figures. I don't know why everyone likes figures so much. I don't want to, I'm not going to, I don't want to come on a little tiny version of an anime girl. Why would I do that? I have more important things to do. <laughs> I have more important things to do with my life. Um, yeah, where, where do you get good, good quality posters from? Like, I look on Amazon, you know, let's, let's fucking, let's find out. It seems like there's a couple of pretty nice ones that I found on Amazon. They never used to be there. I've looked at these before. My hair is at this awkward length where all I can do is this, like, shitty, like, Beatles fucking look. And it looks awful. Look like an actual head of a penis. So like I'm trying to like kind of split it as in the center as I can without it being a center part. But it's not great. My hair is just no longer anywhere close to usable. So what is this? There's like a bunch of posters here and they're all like pretty cheap. And they'll have Chino in various states of undress. <laughs> yeah. And this one... See, this looks like it's high quality. At least the... It's like this one... So this one is... Like... Like... What is this? 20 centimeters by 30 centimeters? How long is that? Like... That, that's, that's pretty small. But they have bigger ones. This one's 60, so that's twice that big. But, like... Is the resolution of the image actually scaled up for a bigger poster? Who knows? It's, it's, it's technically a wall scroll, I guess. Um... Like, what is this? This is a completely different anime. None of, only one of these is Chino. But then the other four images they have, what is this? That's Overlord. And this is... Rem. And, and then that's what? Is it... I don't fucking know what that is. I, I, she looks familiar to me, but I don't know. There's this, so this is the Chino... Chino with like a randoseru and like, like kind of looking like she just fell over or something. I don't know. That one's alright. And it's the cheapest. It's very cheap. It's like suspiciously cheap. Um, but what are the ratings on it? Let's see. There's no reviews. Right. So that's sus. I might get the smallest version is £3.99, which is 
kind of fucking insanely cheap, right? So I, I'm gonna buy that just because it's it's four quid and free delivery. So like you know, I'm I'm it's, it's even if it turns out to be shit, it's kind of so cheap it doesn't matter. Then there's this one that's like sixty quid, uh, but it you know I'm gonna assume it's higher quality just because it's sixty quid. Um, uh, it, but this also has no reviews, right? Like I'm guessing this is just like a print on request type of deal where they just have like. Right, and that this image does not look. You know what? I'm not. I don't trust that. When you zoom in on the image, you can see the pixels. I don't want to see. Like, you see the, the fucking JPEG distortion. And this, this doesn't even have Chino in it. It has other girls from Gotcha You, sir. It has every girl except for Chino. We're not buying that one. Why does it say Camel Toe? Why does camel toe in the tags? None of these girls have a camel toe. They're all just chilling. They're all just like in like a Halloween themed get up, just flying around in the air. What is that about? What is what? what that's very strange. It's very odd. That's very unusual. Uh, this see that's like clearly unofficial art. It looks awful. I guess what you want to do is that that fucking magazine, right? Like Megami magazine. You want to get like Megami magazine shit, right? Like. We can get like some Megami magazine, like shit, you know. Like that's what you fucking want, and they're super cheap. Oh no, no, they're not cheap. Those are digital versions. I don't want to read the fucking digital versions, because you want you want to. Oh, they're actually very expensive if they're not the digital versions, right? You see, that's what you don't want to do. Um, so we got like this weird, like suspiciously cheap, got you supposed to. And then there's this one, which is literally a hundred quid, almost. <laughs> and like you can see the pixels. You can see the like this is clearly a scam. Like I don't know who's fucking fucking trying to scam weebs like this. I don't want to buy climbing shoes. I stopped climbing like months ago. Fuck off, Amazon. Stop reminding me that I'm lazy and I should be going climbing. Right? Like it's all fucking nonsense. This is it's all a scam. They're trying to they're trying to fuck with the the weebs of the world. They know that they, they know we're too powerful and they're just trying to fucking you know, take it away from us. But I don't I don't want that. I wanna get a high quality poster for a good price. And they don't they don't seem to have any of those anymore. What is this world coming to? Right, like a lot of these are interesting, but none of these are the right anime. These look this whatever this brand is like, I kind of trust them, right? Looks like it might be the same brand that made my one, which is not great, but not terrible, right? But but none of these are, like, Azure Lane. Like, this one just has, this one just has Booba in it. I'm not getting that one. Neko Power, and they're naked? No, thank you. Hey, that's my name. What have we got, like, Koriga Zombie Desga, Grand Blue... A lot of Koriga Zombie Deska. What is this? Black Bullet? Fucking more Koriga Zombie Deska. It's all as your lane. What is this shit, man? They have 400. They This is clearly like some sort of automated service. Like, there's no way that someone has gone through and done this. <laughs> right? you know and do I even have a problem with that that's the that's the real thing that I'm asking myself right now like that's what I'm scared of they have Miru Tights ones is, I like Miru Tights I don't think I'd get a poster up from it but Miru Tights is cool Miru Tights is kind of cool but yeah I don't know it's all very strange that's the you know th at the end of the day this whole thing is very strange this, like, what are we doing here? Like, we're just, we're looking at, like, pictures of... I don't know... Anime girls to hang in my room? Like, wh how is this relevant? How is this relevant? Why am I recording? You know, at the end of the day, shouldn't I just stop the recording now, find the posters I want, and then then go through then, rather than just sort of like rambling, as I'm doing right now. But I'm not really paying attention to the stuff I'm saying, I'm just sort of talking, because, just for the sake of it, right? Just, just because, just to have something to do while I scroll 
through all of these these anime posters for anime I don't care about. And it's all as your lane. It's so much as your lane and fucking melee tights and and Koraga zombie desuka. It's it's insane. I'm gonna have to scroll through four hundred pages of this. You understand? Hey, look, there's Megumin. At least it's a change. Grand Blue, still Grand Blue, right? Is this a Chino? That looks like a Chino. I've caught I've I've caught one in the wild. That's a Chino. Chino spotted. But I don't really like the art. But oh, another one. I, I'm in the Gotchi. I've ended up. I'm, I'm in the Gotchi. I'm in Gotchi Uzbekistan. I fucking found it. I found the chinos. I found where they're keeping them. Some of these are rather lewd. <laughs> Damn. You can get away with anything on Amazon these days. See, this is quite nice. It's definitely not official art. Uh, oh, there's there's Pansu in this image. There's subtle, hidden Pansu. I don't think we want that. I don't think we want to hang that up in my room. But this one, that's quite... That's, that's a little moe. This one's a little moe. I'm gonna keep that on the back burner. I don't mind that one. I don't mind that one. But some of these are, are pushing it. Some of these are pushing it. Not, I mean, some of these are pushing it in terms of what's legal, <laughs> like let alone what I'd want to hang on my wall. Like that's 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 too different from her normal character design. No, thank you. She's that th she's naked in this one. No, we don't want that. And that's it. Oh, there's more. Okay, this one's all right. This one. It's like a Valentine's themed one. And there's quite a lot actually. Sundress Chino, that's quite nice. I like Sundress Chino. A school uniform. But this is like I wonder who draws these. I mean I you know whoever whatever fucking artist they've scraped for these images is is not getting any recognition. This is not bad. It's not that bad actually. I don't dislike it that much. But, um, I don't like it that much. I don't know if I like it enough to spend 30 quid on it. Um, that's not too bad. Right, I'm going to come back when I've when I've discovered what I need to dis discover. When you, you discover it. What's that from? Decover it. You have to decover it. I think it's from Sugarpine7, another YouTube channel. Hey! There fits in, fits in the theme of YouTube channels that uh, that stopped existing. But but Stephen Subtick became a Twitch streamer. You know that was very strange. Going from like being a big Sugar Pine Seven fan, and then like the Among Us boom happened, and uh, and then seeing like Stephen Subtick playing Among Us with like disguised toast. So those are a weird fucking experience. Where's my vape? Where's my goddamn vape? That's what I've been asking you people all these years and none of you can give me a proper fucking answer. Where's my fucking vape? Where's my fucking vape?